Hey gang, what's up? Just Aaron right here, Canadian Looney. We're gonna head to Boylston Park, the lower park. We're gonna do some intros um, on conflicts of interest. We've got some questions remaining. I think most Canadians that pay attention do. Canadians that don't pay attention should. Randy Bossino, Trudeau, uh, Conrad Van Finkenstein. It's all a conflict of interest, guys. Everyone has an opinion about Canadian federal politics. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey gang, so now we're in Boylston Park. This is the lower park. I believe the upper park closed. I checked the calendar, but uh, if it is open, we'll take a spin up there and show you the view. Anyhow, when I was in high school, we had our uh, class photo taken on this bridge. Um, telling you, man, where I live is a beautiful spot. Check this out. I'll try to dig up my class photo to show that to you. It's pretty fun. But gang, we've got to talk about these conflicts of interest. Randy Bossino, Justin Trudeau, Ethics Commissioner, uh, Conrad Van Finkenstein. The Minister of Employment has been throwing stones at glass houses for too long. We learned last week that the Minister has failed to remove himself from his own PPE company and lobbyist firm, which is a clear conflict of interest. Yep. He remains a director of his PPE company in contravention of the Code of Ethics. The Minister's previous lobby firm that he gifted to his friend and colleague successfully lobbied six federal departments, including his own department, for millions of dollars in federal grants for the Edmonton International Airport. A man who claims we focused only on Albertans and Canadians has now shown his true colours. We now know he has only ever been worried about himself. How dare this minister show his face in this house every day, claiming to advocate for Albertans while putting down our Premier and taking advantage of the Albertan people. Albertans knew better and now so do Canadians. What we got going on? Hi, puppy. Hi. Hello. How do you like the island? <laughs> Have a good day. So, back to the story. Randy Bolsono received text messages from his business partner, Stephen Anderson. We're going to take a look at Stephen Anderson. Watch this guy burn up this stand. This guy is so flaming. It's uh, ridiculous. Like, I don't mind gay people. I don't mind anybody as long as you're not sick of whatever it is in my face. I don't want some woman that's heterosexual. I'm heterosexual. I don't want some putting it on me. Like, you know. So it's not about gay or whatever, but my goodness. I do judge a little bit. I find it funny for anybody to wear black nail polish when they're testifying in front of a parliamentary committee. 45, Mr. Brock. Mr. Anderson, you are a self-admitted liar. You lack any credibility whatsoever. It really begs the question, yeah. how much did Minister Boissano pay you for your silence? Mr. Chairman, I have How much did he pay you? I have not had no communication with Minister Boisenault. You've only had one other partner in your entire operation with GHI and GHS. You've confirmed that is Randy Boisenault. The word partner in all of these email exchanges was never autocorrected, was it? Was it? There was no email communication. I'm talking text messages. The word partner in text messages was never autocorrected, was it? It was not referring to Randy Boisenault. You've had unusual contract wins. You've had a half a dozen lawsuits, nearly eight million in court-ordered debts, civil allegations of fraud, a fire 16 days after at a warehouse by three arsonists. Yesterday, we learned you got into a business with a Dominican drug dealer. Nobody believes you. No one at this committee believes you. Canadians don't believe you. Fess up. The gig is up. The only other Randy that was autocorrected, according to you, 
nine times was in fact Minister Randy Boissonneau. Admit it. Mr. Chairman, it was not Randy Boissonneau. Who was it? As I have said at my opening statement, I am happy to provide the individual's name in question. Not good enough. Gowie's understanding, according to their Thank communications you, with Mr. you. Nackby. Mr. Brock, time's up. Total flamer, guys. Like, and I don't mind. Do what you like with your life, but man, it's it's just it's comical, right? Like he and Randy were partners of different sorts. They uh, were in business together, but they were also in bed together, and they were also in business bed together. It's gross. Mr. Boissonneau, who's Randy? Randy, everybody, make sure you take out your colors. Make sure you're ready to be proud of who you are, who you love, and don't forget, we also, faut toujours avoir une pancarte pour la fierté. Donc, soyez vous êtes, aimez qui vous aimez, soyez fier d'être Canadien et queer, and know that this government and I always have your backs. Joyeux saison de la fierté. Happy Pride. With respect, Minister, I share MP Green's uh, uh, latter comments that your testimony has not been helpful. In fact, not only have you been disrespectful, you um, are exhibiting traits in my old career that I would classify as a lying witness. You've been evasive. That's not appropriate, Mr. Chair. Well, it is. That is not a, that's not parliamentary language. Imagine this guy, and he's getting sassy now on the stand. He's getting sassy. Freaking ridiculous. All of these facts. It appears, unfortunately, to be a deliberate attempt to mislead Canadians by portraying what has been fully disclosed to the Ethics Commissioner as scandalous when no such scandal exists. For them, following the rules, being open and transparent, meeting all the obligations, and having the Ethics Commissioner see no need to evaluate my business affairs are simply inconvenient obstacles that can get in the way of a social media clip. Let's move on to questions, Mr. Chair, after which I'll get straight back to work serving Edmontonians, Albertans, and all Canadians. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Boissonneau. And before I go to Mr. Barrett, I'm just going to remind you, sir, that you are here today because of a motion that was passed by this committee, uh, a majority of members on this committee. Mr. Barrett, you have six minutes. Go ahead. Minister, uh, there's fraud and another Randy in a partner call at your company. What's the other Randy's last name? So, Mr. Barrett, I do not know the name of that person, as I stated in my opening statements. And uh, before at committee, I have no relationship, no operational uh, role with GHI. I do sure. not know that person in question. That person is not me. What's your percentage stake in the company? As has been disclosed in my... In my disclosure to the Commission of Ethics, it is 50% stake in GHI that is held in my holding company. Who are the partners of the company? I do not know. It is Mr. Anderson, to my degree, to my knowledge, is the only administrator of that company. So I, have no, I have no connection other than holding the shares to that company, Mr. Barrett. Holding half of the shares? Half of the shares are in my numbered company as disclosed to the do, Commissioner of Ethics. Do you know who holds the balance of the shares? <laughs> Uh, when I was involved, the last time I looked, it was Mr. Anderson. So it's your understanding that you and Randy Boissonneau and Mr. Anderson are 50-50 partners in the company? That is not correct. The shares are held by 2256956 Alberta Limited. Who owns that number I company? Do. Cute. And he's getting away with it. He got away with their never having to reveal who the other Randy was, which hopefully when the conservatives get in, they're gonna circle back to that because it is such bullshit. Thing is, all we can do is watch, try to share it with other Canadians. What we see happening, this is what is going on in our country, it's shameful. Canadians that are paying attention, though, are getting pretty wound up. What can you do about it? Contact your MP, especially if you have a Liberal MP, and say that you're displeased and you will be not voting Liberal in the next election, no matter what they do now. Doesn't matter. Tell them it's over. Because it is over. Oh my God, this trail is amazing. 
How about this, guys? This is a four minute drive from my house. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy the walks uh, in between the clips because we can do these. We've got beauty abound. There's no shortage of places to go. So many spots in this beautiful area. It's pretty untouched. We were supposed to get a railroad, I don't know, about a hundred years ago. Didn't get it. And uh, it was a political thing back then too. Anyhow, we didn't get one. And now we have this beautiful place that is pretty much untouched. It's touched a little bit, just enough. Like I say, people here are kind. Mr. Cooper, you have five minutes. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Minister Boisno, you held the title of partner at GHI before you were elected, correct? I recall, I actually can't remember that, but uh, partner was you, the title that I used while okay. I was operating the company. Th thank you. Mr. Cooper. Thank you for confirming that. And uh, just at, at the GHI is not exactly a ma big, big operation. Uh, there was you, there was Anderson, and there were a few employees, correct? Correct. And so I pose to you, for you, Mr. Chair, then who was the other Randy? I do not know who the other Randy was. They were somebody hired Thank after you. You I was... You, you but I do not know no, who that person is, Mr. Four Chair. Four seconds, four seconds. Mr. Sure. Cooper, go ahead. You, you have a 50% stake in the company. There's only a handful of people there, and you presently have a 50% stake in GHI, and you mean to tell me that you have no idea out of a handful of people, if not you, who the other Randy is. Are you serious? 20 seconds. Go ahead, Minister. I have had no operational involvement in this company since I was elected. The company has hired and probably let go people since I was there. I am not allowed to know about the operation of this company, Mr. Cooper, because it is not permitted by the Minister, Ethics Commissioner, Minister, and so I followed you, all the thank rules. Thank you for that. Uh, Minister, that is nonsense, and you know it, but I'm going to It's not to nonsense, Mr. 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 Chair. Mr. That, is Mr. Not, that is not a fair statement. It's not nonsense. It is Let the him truth. finish, please, Sir. Mr. Vossano. Go ahead, Mr. Cooper. Mr. Your answer simply doesn't add up, but it, 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 there's more to it than that, because if, if it's some other Randy, then why did the Gawi group believe that the Randy referenced in the text messages was you? Why? Fifteen seconds, Minister. Mr. Chair, it would be inappropriate for me to have anything to do with operational matters. I stepped away from the company in the fall of 2022. Of course I don't know who the employees what? are. And in why, the article today, it, it says it, that I am not doesn't add up. that Randy. Doesn't, doesn't. He's got three seconds. Go ahead, Minister. I am not the Randy in this article, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Cooper. Doesn't, doesn't add up, Minister. And uh, if it's not you, how is it that Global News couldn't verify who the Randy was? Uh, Anderson said it was there was some other Randy in charge of logistics, but uh, when Global News looked into it, they found that the guy who held himself out as responsible for logistics is one Edward Anderson, not a Randy. Mr. Cooper, I have no operational relationship to that company, and so the matters of staff are not in my purview. And let me state again for the record, from this morning's article, from the Gowie Group, we have had no direct communication with Mr. Bossano at any point in our dealings with Stephen and the companies, and Mr. Anderson has said that that Randy is not me, and I have the not received any communication from Mr. Cooper, through, go ahead. Through, you, group. through you, Mr. Chair, Minister, in looking at the text message from Randy, to Anderson, it states it's 1514 Eastern Standard Time. This is a text to someone who is in Alberta in a text message about a client in California. What is the what is 1514 Eastern Time? Well, it happens to be the time zone of Ottawa. Just another coincidence, Randy? <laughs> I mean, I have no idea because I did not receive those texts and I have no operational relationship to this company. Be, be, be and available it's for a time Mr. zone Mr. Cooper, just let in a text. Respond, it's a time zone in a text that I have nothing to do with. Well, Mr. Anderson another, has said that's not it's another, me. It's another Mr. piece. Gowie, Mr. It's Chair, another Mr. Piece. Cooper, Chair, Mr. I am not being interrupted. Mr. Cooper, just, he's got uh, like eight seconds. Let him respond, please. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Thank Boisson, you, Mr. Chair. I am question. not the Randy in question. 
Mr. Anderson has indicated that I'm not the Randy in question, and the Gowie group Mr. has said they've had Mr. no communication. Mr. Cooper, with go me. ahead. And uh, so not only you know, Eastern Time, Ottawa, uh, also be available in 15 for a partner call. You said you had previously been a partner. Just an upper coincidence? Just an upper Randy? The operational word in your statement, Mr. Cooper, is previously. I ceased to be uh, an officer and a director of GHI in October of 2021, full stop. Mr. Cooper, go ahead. you got 25 seconds. Minister Gowie Group thinks it's you. Global News can't track down who the other Randy is. The, the Randy who's texting happens to be referencing Eastern Time. Mm -hmm. You happen to be. Uh, a member of parliament serving a lot of your time in Ottawa. You said you were a partner. The text message references a partner. This is a small operation. You have a 50% stake in the fact that you can't identify who the other Randy is doesn't pass the smell test. Thank and you. if there isn't another Thank Randy, you, then you, sir, <laughs> broke the law. Mr. Thank Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. May, may I That's respond, the, Mr. Chair? It's the end of the time. You can respond in, in the next round. That's it. Sorry to interrupt the video, guys. My name's Aaron Canadian Looney, trying to show Canadians what I'm seeing happening in uh, Parliament. And there is a lot of things happening in Parliament, guys. Like, subscribe, share, get notified, all those fun things. Get back to the video. Here we go. So the conflict of interest would be that Conrad Van Finkenstein was appointed by Justin Trudeau. He's been in bed with the Liberals. So, like, how can you trust any decisions that the Ethics Commissioner, that's uh, Conrad Van Fingenstein, um, could possibly make? Go to uh, Mr. Cooper for five. Go ahead, uh, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Minister Boissano, when you last appeared before this committee, this committee had text messages referencing a Randy from September 8th. You said... The Randy referenced in those text messages was not you. And your office even put out a statement saying that you were in Vancouver and had no access to uh, ele electronic devices and that you had made no phone calls during the time frame in question on September 8th. Since you appeared before committee, we now have a new tranche of text messages from September 6th that reference Randy in Vancouver. You, Randy, through you, Mr. Chair, were in Vancouver, and now you tell the committee that you did talk to Anderson. You did text Anderson. You didn't say that before. You left this committee with the impression that you had no communications with Anderson, and now you say that? I would submit, Mr. Boissano, through you, Mr. Chair, that that is a material omission. It is a material misrepresentation. Why didn't you tell the full truth the last time you appeared before the committee? Why are we only finding out about this now? Is it because you need a new cover story? Minister? Uh, I reject the ending of your question, Mr. Cooper, emphatically. Um, look, the testimony that I gave at this committee in, uh, when I was last here was about um, September 8th. And then after summer testimony, I proactively provided my text messages to the Commissioner of Ethics. And Mr. Cooper, I don't have data in my phone that indicates who I texted Minister, over two years ago. Minister, Mr. Chair, you, I get more time. You had a choice. I, I do believe I get you more time, You had a choice Mr. to come to this committee and Mr. be forthcoming. Uh, hang on, Mr. Cooper. I'm going to give you a couple more seconds to respond. Uh, members do have the right to reclaim their time as well, and I'm trying to be as fair as I can. Minister, please go ahead. <laughs> so, Mr. Cooper... In the morning of September 6th, as I indicated, I got a text message from Pierre Later. I indicated that to Mr. Anderson. He called me. We had a one-minute phone call. You had a choice. I sent him the Mr. point of order, Mr. Chair. Mr. Cooper, point of order, Mr. Chair. I'm going to Mr. Cooper. Go ahead, Mr. But I you have didn't a point do of order, so Mr. Chair. Very conveniently. Uh, hang on. Hang on. Point of order, uh, Mr. Fisher. Um, as Mr. Green had uh, recommended, uh, order standing mm -hmm. order 16-2, interrupting the witness. Okay. The... Uh, you know, I, look, I, I listened to Mr. Green's uh, questioning, and there were several times where he did reclaim his time in advance of the minister uh, responding. And so I'm going to ask uh, that Mr. Cooper 
we, we give ample time for the question. I know you had a long preamble. The question was there. You have the floor, sir. Go ahead, ask your question. Mr. Chair, the minister had a choice to come here and be forthcoming. He didn't do so. He misrepresented this committee by omission. And I've got to ask you, you said you had nothing to do with the operations of GHI, and now you admit, in fact, you did. Uh, the paying of a bill, that is an operational matter. If you had nothing to do with GHI, why wouldn't you simply pick up the phone, call Pure later, tell them that you have nothing to do with the operations of the business, and for them to call Anderson? Why didn't you do that? Minister? That is a really great question, and the answer is I did three times. And it was a collections group of Pure later that I never contacted that still somehow had my information from their database. So, Mr. Cooper... You, you could have... You could no, have Mr. Very, Cooper, mi, let mi, me finish. Mi, Mr. Boissano, why didn't you, at the very least... Okay, just text him, say, contact Pure later. Why did you then pick up the phone? Isn't the reason you picked up the phone because you wanted to talk about the half a million dollar shakedown? That's why you called Anderson, isn't no, it? No, Mr. Minister, go ahead, please. Not at all. That is simply false, Mr. Cooper. And as I've indicated before... I have nothing to deal with the Gowie Group. I have nothing to deal with um, all of those deals with you, Mr. You Anderson took place after I was an operational member of this company. And I did text Mr. Anderson. He responded to me by telephone. I indicated to him that this bill was there and he should take care of it because I didn't Mr. want Mr. Boston, further no, go ahead. text Mr. messages Mr. from Mr. Boston, no, no one believes you. And after you materially mis misled this committee by leaving out a material fact, you've lost any benefit of the doubt. Nine, you have yet to explain how there are nine text messages referencing Randy when the only Randy at, G at GHI ever was you. You had a 50% interest. You have a text message placing you in Vancouver you were in Vancouver. You've now admitted that on that very day, you spoke and texted with none other than Anderson, which you didn't, weren't forthcoming about until you had now no choice because you wanted to cover your butt. And so, very simply, Minister Boissano, do you think Canadians are stupid? Everyone knows it's you. The Randy in the text messages, the Randy in the half a million dollar shakedown is you, and you, sir, have lacked the character and judgment to serve in cabinet. If you had any intention, point of order, you thank you, uh, point, of Mr. Order. point of order. <coughs> okay, thank you, uh, Minister Boston. I'm going to give you some time uh, to to respond. Uh, quickly, if you don't mind. Uh, sure, I will as, go quickly, quick Mr. Possible. Cooper. If the allegations that you just uh, threw at me were true. The Ethics Commissioner would have seen in an exhaustive evaluation of all the text messages on all of the telephones that I have on all platforms that those text messages existed. They do not. I am not the Randy in question. The well, Ethics Commissioner has said so, and he considers no this matter closed. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Baines, you have five minutes. Go ahead. All right. Uh, we've got a five-minute round uh, for, uh, I believe, Mr. Barrett's going to start, and then we're going to go over to Mr. Brock. So uh, five minutes, Mr. Barrett. Go ahead, please, sir. I have an official document from the Government of Alberta dated March 28, 2020. It's two days before you incorporated Global Health Imports, officially in entering into business with Stephen Anderson. It shows Stephen Anderson listed seven vehicles as collateral, five 2019 Land Rovers and two 2019 Porsches, totaling about a million dollars. Yes or no, did you know about this? Not. So you're un you were unaware that your business partner posted seven high-end luxury vehicles as collateral. That's your story? I didn't review that as part of the filings of the company. It was his decision to put collateral. I didn't have any collateral up in, in my particular... Are you uh, currently driving any of the Land Rovers or Porsches? I am not. Okay. Well, I'm quite sure that no one believes you, other Randy. Mr. Chair, Mr. Brock. Oh, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Barrett, uh, I'm going I'm to suggest, suggest that that was not appropriate. I'm going to go to Mr. Barrett. Thank you. Or Mr. Brock, go ahead. 
Minister, despite your best efforts, this story is not going away anytime soon. Uh, the cloud of suspicion will hang over you until the next election, after which time you'll be looking for a new job. Let's take a look at the facts. Galway Group knew of only one Randy, and that Randy was a minister of the Canadian right. government. That's yourself. At all material times prior to your election, you were in a 50-50 partnership with Anderson. During your time with the company, with Mr. Anderson, you, in fact, were the only person named Randy. Mr. Anderson, who you're now deeply disappointed about, although you didn't say that when you first testified, blatantly lied to the committee about lying to Canadians and lying to the press that there was some other Randy. He also promised this committee to provide us with details as to who the other Randy is. And surprise, surprise, Minister, he couldn't. Because by doing so, he would identify yourself. Then we now find out on September the 6th, you're in a text communication with Anderson. You're in a phone call with Anderson, despite you assuring us at committee the first time that you've had no communication with Mr. Anderson. Highly, highly suspicious, uh, Mr. Mr. Boissonneau. And furthermore, you know full well that this is indeed an operational issue that is banned by the ethics laws for any minister to engage in a management capacity or an operational capacity. You could have had a staffer reach out to, to Anderson. You could have simply told the courier company, I got nothing to do with the company, deal with Anderson, go pound salt, not my responsibility. You chose to take matters into your own hands to deal directly with Mr. Anderson. Those are the uncontroverted facts. Now, you're also relying upon the fact that you exercised your due diligence with this committee and your due diligence with the Ethics Commissioner. I asked you specifically to provide us with details, all your text messages on all your devices. You failed to do that, Minister. You gave this committee only one set of records pertaining to one device. I was led to believe you told the Ethics Commissioner you had two devices. Again, the Ethics Commissioner is not an investigator. They don't have investigative powers like law enforcement. They can't obtain production orders on service providers to verify what you are saying. So the Ethics Commissioner has to take it on good faith that you're being honest. I've got some serious reservations about your honesty, as do Canadians. So, will you provide this committee with all text records on all your devices? And tell us how many devices you had in your possession in the fall of 2022. Mr. Chair, will you give me two and a half minutes to respond? We have to. Uh, There's move only on. one I think question. It was, I think it was a, a very simple question. Uh, Mr. Brock was commenting. It was a two and a half minute question. I, I realized that, there. but it was a very simple question. I'm going to ask you to answer the question and then I'm going to go to Mr. Howe's father. Uh, Mr. Mr. Brock, the information that you cited in your monologue was reviewed by the Ethics Commissioner. I'm not the Randy in question. It is not me. It's not possible for it to be me. That is in the Commissioner's letter of September 12th. He considers this matter closed. And look, I'm at the committee's disposal, and I provided the committee with information that it required it's of me. Sufficient information. Minister, Mr. will you Mr. provide Brock. us with full Chair, information? That's time, then. If will you the provide us with... What are you Chair. hiding, Minister? Chair. So, uh, just relax. So, what are you hiding? M Minister... I, I, I've never seen you do that to anyone no, else. No, because, because when I get you in my ear over here and I'm trying to listen to what's going on, then I can't focus on the uh, on the questioning, Ms. Khalid, okay? So, Minister, uh, I'm going to ask you, on behalf of Mr. Brock, you've been asked a very specific question about the devices. Are there any other devices that you can provide to the committee, sir? Uh, no, Mr. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, because I provided all text messages across all devices for the dates in question across all platforms as asked by the committee. Mr. House Father. Oh, it's whack, guys. And Randy Balsano, this guy is such a creep and a liar. 
Now this is how Randy behaves in the House of Commons. It's so outrageous, so woke, so fake, such bullshit. I'm fed up. Canadians that watch this stuff are not going to need to see it many times before they catch on to the fact that these liberals are corrupt and any NDP MP sitting there, they're a liberal too. They're in cahoots, guys. And well, cahoots is a, is a fun sounding word. They're up to something sinister and it's not good for Canadians. A member from Stonington, this South Glengarry. After nine years of NDP Liberals, time is up for the Prime Minister's endless chaos and failures. And let's use his own words on immigration just from last year to prove it. Quote, as our government is raising immigration levels to the highest levels that have ever been, people are like, we're already facing challenges in housing. Where are we going to house these 500,000 people per year? And now, a year too late, the Prime Minister made an announcement that is an admission of a massive failure of his record after nine years. Will the Prime Minister admit that his flip-flop has caused lasting damage to Canada's housing market, health care and jobs? The Honourable Minister for Employment and Workforce Development. Mr. Speaker, we've answered that question already this week. My question, and a question that Canadians from the queer community want to know, is where was that member, who is a member of the queer community, when it came to 50% of kids living in the street who are LGBT because their straight parents kicked them out? Where's that member when Blaine Higgs went after trans kids in New Brunswick? Where's that member when Danielle Smith is saying she's going to take the rights of trans kids away? Where's that member when Scott Moe is focusing on bathrooms in a Saskatchewan election? He will not show up at Canadian Pride events. When we talk about trans issues, he should be ashamed. He is not defending the queer community of Canada. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Canada's collapsing per person economy. It means lower wages, which means that Canadians can afford less food, less housing, and governments can afford less for schools and hospitals. It's the direct result. So these are the first economic data points that have come out since they jacked up the capital gains tax and now driving billions of dollars south of the border. Why don't, you, why don't they follow our common sense plan to axe taxes? In fact, in addition to getting rid of the carbon tax, why not follow our plan to axe the GST on new homes to build 30,000 more per year? It's common sense. Let's bring it home. The Honourable Minister for Employment and Workforce Development. Mr. Speaker, we can do the, the facts game all day long. Let's just focus. The Leader of the Opposition likes to remind people that he has roots in Alberta. So let's talk about the Liberal government's investments in Alberta, Mr. Speaker. $22 billion in clean energy investments for clean electricity, for hydrogen, for greening the grid, for making sure that we have the greenest barrel of oil in the world, Mr. Speaker. The third in the world for foreign direct investment. We are the number one in the world per capita for foreign direct investment. They don't want to tell Canadians about it. We will, and we'll make sure there are good jobs from coast to coast to coast. Let's take a peek at this. Interesting. Somebody put a rock in a tree. Yeah, guys, I live in a beautiful spot, there's no doubt. Um, people here are kinder because of it. How's that? How's that for... Where do you live? It does feel a lot colder. My car says uh, 7 degrees. I don't agree. Feels like 2 with, with pretty heavy humidity actually for a cool temperature like that. Anyhow guys, we're gonna jump back in my uh, little gimp car here, zip home and cut up this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the walk. Let me know in the comments if uh, you like doing these nature walks because I think that people do need a little dose of something to relieve the tension after watching these ridiculous politicians go at it. What a gong show. What a gong show. All right, I think that's it. All right, gang, so that is our tour of Boylston Park and our review of the conflicts of interest between Randy Balsano, Justin Trudeau, our ethics commissioner, who was appointed by Justin Trudeau, 
our James Bond villain of this story is Conrad Van Fingenstein. And he seems to think that there was enough evidence to say that Randy didn't have to find the other Randy that worked for his five person company that was sending these texts. It's crock shit guys. What are you gonna do? We're gonna head home. We're gonna head home, cut up this video. Let's see if what kind of what kind of view can you get here? Yeah, gang, so I'm right with you. Um, All right, gang, that, that, that gets us back to the house. So we're going to go cut up that video. This is going to be one to watch, gang. Stay tuned. Watch this. It's out of hand. Like, subscribe, share, get notified, all those fun things. Everyone has an opinion about Canadian federal politics. <laughs> oh, yeah.